Welcome to this new recording and thank you for watching. In this video we're going to learn how to do design space exploration and high level synthesis. What we're going to do is what you see in the screen is a description, a behavioral description, a C program of an FIR filter. And it's basically a loop where you do the sum of products and then you do the rounding of the of the filter that you want to do. So now what we can do in high level synthesis without change in the behavioral description is generate different microarchitectures with different area versus performance trade-offs. So in this case we're using the high-level synthesis of Cyber Workbench here, which it comes with an automatic design space explorer and has different options. You can, for example, explore pragmas that are inserted automatically in the source code to do, for example, different types of loop unrolling or functional inlining. Or in this case, we're going to select only the functional units exploration. So basically, it will start by parallelizing the C program and using as many functional units as possible. And then it's going to reduce automatically the number of functional units used to create um, different microarchitectures with different area performance trade-offs. So in this case, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the exploration using ex targeting Xilinx FPGA. And afterwards, we're going to repeat the same thing targeting an ASIC to see if there are any differences between the design space exploration, basically, uh, between the FPGA and the ASIC. So let's start the Explorer. And we, he we see here the Explorer has generated the first design. You see the, the red square on the screen where the x-axis is the latency and the y-axis is the area. So we have this trade-off curve that we see on the screen. So it created one design and now it's reducing the number of functional units. So in the first very first design it tried to maximize the amount of parallelism and then it's reducing the parallelism by assigning instantiating less functional units. And we're seeing that it's, we're not getting what we expected we generated a, the, the explorer created an inverted trade-off curve and then at the end the exploration deleted all non-optimal designs there was an inverted trade-off curve so let's see let's let's redo the same thing targeting an ASIC and see what we get so in this first uh, experiment we did not get what we expected at the end the result was a single design a single dominating design that de dominate all the other ones because it was the smallest design with the best performance. So it never made, would never make sense to actually use the, the other designs because they were larger and we had um, a worse performance, or worse latency. Now, in this case, we do the same. Now, we target an ASIC and we're going to run the Explorer again. Let's see what happens this time. Now, we run the Explorer for, the, for an ASIC, for any partic no particular technology. And now, the Explorer starts generating a design. This is the first design with the maximum of parallelism, maximum number of functional units. And now it's creating smaller designs. It's actually working. We're getting a trade-off curve. So now by reducing the number of functional units, what the high-level synthesis tool is creating a microarchitecture that does resource sharing. It's basically reusing those functional units, inserting multiplexers in the circuit to create a different design with different area versus performance trade-offs. Now the main reason for this is that the cost of multiplexers and FPGAs is larger than the actual cost of the functional units that you're saving by reducing the number of functional units. Whereas in ASIC it's the opposite. The cost of the functional units is larger than the multiplexers. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.